Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Mama Ois Aiman Bimo Ozi. My student ID is 20208729262. My group is BA25028. Uh, I will present about performance management. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nobadumi Zafitri bin Ibrahim. Student ID 20206021802. We are from group 5. We will discuss about how performance management gives positive effect on organizational performance. This topic contains about performance management, developing effective performance management system, performance review methods, and performance review meetings and feedback sessions. Performance management system. Performance management, a process that makes the work environment in which all people can perform all the best of their ability in order to make a company go. For example, Samsung hire the best people around the world uh, to make it set a world-class workplace and also it to increase the Samsung performance organization. Step in the performance management process. Step one is goal set to align with higher level goal. For example, ASA go to allow everyone to fly so that ASA can increase their performance organization because they have specific goal to achieve. The second step is behavior expectation extended set and then align with employee and organization goal. For example, the employee must know what they must do in their job because their work must link to the organization objective. The third step is ongoing performance feedback provided. The employee itself must know what they let in their job because they are the one doing their job and we have a key insight into what scale competency and goals will be assist the company to achieve the organization goal. Step 4 is performance appraised by manager and other. For example, manager will review workers' performance to make sure the workers will improve their skill to increase organization performance. Step 5 is formal review of feedback session conducted. For example, manager will have a meeting to give formal review performance to workers because to make sure the workers will improve their performance. Step C is HR decision making. For example, manager will increase employee wage or give any promotion to employee based on their performance in company organization. Or this step is to make sure the uh, performance performance organization will increase in the future. Performance review is a result from a process which a manager evaluates an employee's performance relative to the requirements of his or her jobs and use the information to show the person where improvement can be made and how. Purpose of a performance review developmental is a provide performance feedback such as manager will always give any feedback to their employee based on their current performance. Identify individual strengths and weakness such as when manager give a review to their employees, manager will know of their employees' strengths and weakness based on their performance review. All of this is to make sure to increase performance organization. Administrative promo employees such as manager will give any promotion to employees but all the promotion given to them will based on their performance in company organization. Make a reward and compensation decision such as manager will increase employee wage because the compensation and rewards as received by employee is proportional to the effort expected by them. Reason why performance review can fail. The employee is not given clear objective at the beginning of performance period. For example, the manager did not explain very well about the company objective to employee. It has caused the bad performance to the employee in company organization. No, no follow up and coaching of the review. For example, the employee did not improve any their skill or their performance although the manager has given the feedback review to them. All of the reason will give back effect to the performer organization. Performer will view meeting and feedback session. The format for the meeting or session will be determined in last part 
by a proper type of performance management system used in organization of a thing review form. A, for, a formal performance evaluation should be scheduled for enough in advance to allow the subordinate and manager to prepare for the discussion. Type of performance review meeting and feedback session. First, type and set. For example, executive communicate a more limited set of messages, first telling employees about the key issue, then selling them on the wisdom of their approach. Second, tell and listen. For example, supervisor describe their perception of an employee's strength and weakness and listen to the employee's feeling about the evaluation without refuting an employee's objection. Third, problem solving. This format seeks to obtain the employees buy-in for a mature, a good, open way to overcome obstacles and actually improve the percent actually performance. All this type will give a good effect to the organization, organization performance. Conducting the performance review meeting or feedback session. Ask for a self-evaluation. Ensure that the employee knows or guess what criteria he or she is being evaluated, eliminating any potential surprise. Invite participation. Supervisor to encourage their employee to speak freely and listen closely to what they have to say. Express appreciation. Praise is a powerful motivator and employees are seeking more positive feedback. Be supportive and demonstrate that you care. Employee frequently attribute performance problems to either real or processing of stocker. Minimum criticism. Most times employees can absorb only so much criticism before they start to get intensive. Establish goals. Revisiting goals during a performance review also appreciate the ongoing nature of the process. Follow up day to day. A better approach is to have informal thoughts periodically to follow up on the issue that were discussed. All of this will improve employees' performance in organization. Improving performance. Identify the stuff of ineffective performance. A person's performance is a function of several factors. But perhaps it can be boiled down to three primary concerns, ability, motivation, and environment. Performance diagnosis. By comparing different performance measures, manager can begin to get an idea of the underlying cause of performance problems. Managing effective performance. Once the source of performance problems are known, a course of action can be planned, such as providing training or transferring the employees. Focus on changing the behavior, not the person. A manager must separate the employee from the behaviors. All of this will help to increase organization performance. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Mama Afis Ben Asdizan, student number 2020495914. I will explain about developing an effective performance management system. A firm's human resource department ordinarily has the primary responsibility for overseeing and coordinating its performance management system. However, managers from the company's operating departments must also be actively involved, particularly when it comes to helping establish the objective for the program ensure they are aligned with a company's strategic goals and actually translate to on-the-job efforts. Employees are more likely to accept and be satisfied with a performance management system when they have the chance to participate in its development. Performance standards should be based on job-related requirements derived from a job analysis and reflected in an employee's job description and job specifications. Therefore, setting SMART goals can be quite useful. SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time-based. Realistic and specific performance standards, they are attainable in a certain amounts of time, measurable and written down communicate process information to employees. There are four basic elements that must be considered when establishing performance standards 
which is strategic relevance, criteria on deficiency, criteria on contamination, and reliability. Firstly, strategic relevance refers to the extent to which the performance standards relate to the strategic objective of the organization. For example, if an organization has established a standard that 95% of all customer complaints are to be resolved in one day, then it is relevant for the firm's customer service representative to be held to this standard when evaluated. Secondly, criterion deficiency when performance standards focus on a single criterion, such as sales revenues, to the exclusion of other important but less quantifiable performance dimensions, such as customer service, then the performance management system is said to suffer from criterion deficiency. Thirdly, criterion decontamination occurs when the criterion measure includes aspects of performance that are not part of the or when the measure is affected by construct irrelevant factors that are not part of the criterion construct. Fourthly, reliability refers to the stability or consistency of a standard or the extent to which individuals tend to maintain a certain level of performance over time. <laughs> Fairness and acceptability Employees who believe the performance management system is unfair are likely to consider the process a waste of time or feel frustrated and cynical. Acceptability relates to how hard or difficult it is to administer and use the performance management system. Performance standard will positively affect organization when it provides a means for employers to measure job performance and productivity for each skill. Furthermore, it presents employees with specific performance expectations for each skill and ensure a fair evaluation of all employees doing the same job tasks. Other than that, it will encourage communication between the supervisor and the employee. Performance review, like selection methods, must meet specific legal standards. Performance reviews can be a double-edged sword from a legal perspective. We need them to help employees do better and document their activities as managers, but if they are badly done or inaccurate or do not make judgments based on them, company can find themselves in legal problems. To avoid problems such as this, performance reviews should meet the following legal guidelines. Firstly, performance rating must be job-related with performance standards developed through a job analysis. Secondly, employees must be provided with clear written job standards in advance of their reviews so they understand what they need to do to get top ratings. Thirdly, managers who conduct the reviews must be able to observe the behavior they are rating. Fourthly, document performance problems when they occur. Fifthly, a firm's human resource department should review the evaluation to see if minority groups are being adversely impacted. Sixthly, the reviews should be discussed openly with employees and counseling or corrective guidance offered to help their performance improve their performance. And lastly, an appeals procedure should be established to enable employees to express their disagreement with the evaluations. Performance review can positively affect an organization where performance reviews give employees and managers a chance to discuss how employees are doing and how they can do better together. Done right, they can engage and motivate employees to maximize and align their efforts. Done wrong, they can send employees down a uh, disengagement spiral and even decrease performance. Hi, my name is Muhammad Najmi. And my matrix number is 2021-11075-0785. So today I'm gonna, for now, I'm gonna continue the presentation, the slide presentation, which is already made uh, for a group assignment <coughs> on, um, on uh, performance management. So we shall continue to the slide. So we have here sources of performance review information. So I've stated six, uh, six performance review information. First of all, we have manager or supervisor evaluation. Performance evaluation done by an employee's manager and often reviewed by a manager one level higher. So I'm sorry. 
So basically, uh, supervisors or managers evaluation is based on their subordinates. So their so their employees or their subordinates will uh, evaluate the supervisors. Will evaluate or uh, what kind of attitude the supervisors act when uh, when the subordinate ask for help. What kind of treatment they will receive. How was the supervisor's efficiency of work? Then they, they will evaluate. Next, um, we have self evaluation. So basically, self evaluation, uh, everyone already knows self evaluation. But by Scott is now, self evaluation is a performance evaluation done by the employee being evaluated generally on and evaluation form completed by the employee prior to the evaluation meeting. So self evaluation to put it uh, to put it uh, simple self evaluation is you evaluate yourself you evaluate what is your strength what is your weaknesses to the works uh, what kind of situation that you can't handle and then uh, and then with this evaluation the supervisors or the company we try to improve their performance. We tr we try to improve your perform performance to uh to increase the perform to increase the company's performance. So with that, uh, you will you will get a better environment environment. For example, your work will be more efficient. So you need to know what is your strength or what is your weaknesses. Next, we have subordinate evaluation. Basically, it just the same as supervisor evaluation. The subordinate evaluation will evaluate the uh, managers or superior, um, what we call it, supervisor. Next, we have peer evaluation. Peer evaluation based on Scott is now is a performance evaluation done by one's fellow employees generally on forms compiled into a single profile for use in the evaluation meeting conducted by the employee's manager. So to put it as a simple, peer evaluation is you evaluate your friends at work. You evaluate your friends at work but in the same rank. If you are a dispatch man, then your friend must be dispatch man too. The same rank. So uh, you need to evaluate them. Of course, because of what? Because of you already met him or her a daily. You work with her or him every day. So you know how they go up with the work, how their attitude toward finishing the works. Yeah. And then we have team evaluation. Team evaluation is basically a group a group of project. If I am the supervisor, I have a group of a group of people that make a work for me. A group of people. I have my own I have my own group. So that in the group itself they must evaluate each other. Uh, they must see whether there is that whether they are a free rider or hardworking person or a medium one. So um, in that group, they obviously will be it. It will be very easier for the supervisor to exactly know who is the free rider, who is the hardworking one. Next, we move to the customer evaluation. Customer evaluation is a feedback from the customer. Everyone knows the feedback from the customer. Every company must have. Every company will have their own customer, so the feedback of the customer is very important for a for a company to improve their performance. Yep, because uh, every thing that customer said, they need to take note because of customers are very valuable. So next, we move to the special one, which is um, three hundred sixty degree evaluation putting it all together so uh, based on Scott is now 300 degree evaluation is a performance evaluation done by different people who interact with the employee generally on forms compiled into a single document for use in the evaluation meeting conducted by the employee's manager okay I will make it simple based on my opinion what is 360 degree evaluation so 360 degree evaluation is consists of all people on that company can evaluate whether it is the dispatchman or the postman or the cleaner or the higher level workers or the manager 
all of them have rights to evaluate others. So, um, but, but this kind of 360 degree, degree evaluation have its pros and cons. So we will see in the next slide. So as I said earlier, the 300 degree uh, evaluation or review have its own pros and cons. So uh, first of all, we're gonna look at the pros. Uh, the pros is the system is more comprehensive because feedback is gathered from multiple perspectives. Okay, uh, this means um, the 300 degree evaluation is very uh, useful useful system to use because we can gather all the perspective, all the feedback, all the evaluation from from all of uh, all of the employee in the company. Next, we move to um, it may lessen bias and prejudice since feedback comes from more people, not one individu individual. So I guess I don't need to uh, explain uh, more about this because a lesson bias, uh, the more the people we have, the lesson bias will be. And then we have the feedback from peers and others may improve an employee self-development. Next, we move to the cons or the negative impact of the 360-degree evaluation. So first of all, the system is complex in combining all the responses. Why Scott A. Snell said that? Because if we want to, uh, we want a feedback from the employee, we will because 300, I'm sorry, because 360 degree involve everyone in the company, everyone. So when we want to compile the feedback, we want to com combine the feedback, the evaluation, it will be very hard to compile them because we don't even know who gave the feedback. It is anonymous. So we don't even know how to sort them by their rank or how to sort them by their gender or male. It's a random one. Okay. The second one is the feedback can be intimidating, cause resentment if employees feel the respondents have gang up on them. Basically, this kind, basically, uh, more or less, this uh, is a bully, a bully in the company. Last one, the three, number three, we the writers must undergo some training. Yeah, this I absolutely agree. Uh, what Scott Ace now said, uh, the writers must undergo some training because of if the writers doesn't have any kind of knowledge about uh, how to evaluate people, so then how they will evaluate people? How can evaluate people if they don't have any of knowledge to evaluate them? They don't even know who are they who are want to evaluate, who are they want to evaluate. So the solution here is very simple. The writer must undergo the training first. That's all from me. So I will pass to the next presenters. The next presenter, I'm sorry. Thank you. Performance review methods in performance management. It can classify into three methods, which are traits, behavior, and result methods. Traits are based on one on employees characteristic behavioral focus to more action oriented information to employees and be the best development and the last is result methods focus on the measurable contributions that employees make the organization advantage performance method three methods are inexpensive to develop use meaningful dimensions are easy to use uh, behavioral methods uh, use specific performance dimension are acceptable to employees and to and top management management Useful for for providing feedback and fair for reward and promotion decision. And the last one is the the result methods, uh, less subjective bias, individual presentation methods with management performance and encourage the mutual goal setting. Uh, the methods affects for performance organizationals. The effects are recognized and acknowledge the achievements and contribution made by an an employee. Uh, identify and support need for additional training or education to continue career development. Employees determine the specific areas where skill can be improved. Uh, they can motivate other employees and help them feel involved and interest in in their career development. Uh, also, we can uh, they they also open the discussion to an employees long term goals. 
And the last one is recognize the opportunity for promotion and bonus. Become extrovert people. Employee that have a extroversion score shows that they are have a strong leadership ability. And the last one is agreeableness. Employee can get along with other employees. Employees scoring high in district are usually well liked. The conclusion is performance management is not only an evaluation process of a person's performance with reward as an outcome of it. It's intent to align and improve the performance of an individual to get the overall organization goal. A good performance management should provide a way to create an effective individual development plan.